looking at Sam, Mercury is going to go retrograde in Taurus on um, Monday, May 18th. It's going to be retrograde until June 11th. And when Mercury goes retrograde, it's really a time to introspect, really evaluate our communication style, um, and bring ourselves into contact with that voice in our head, you might say. Mercury is really important in, you know, um, evaluating how you understand life, how you understand things, how you understand yourself. As I say, what that voice is in your head that's interpreting your experiences. Um, and, of course, the voice that comes out of your mouth, out of your head, is also deeply related to Mercury because its origin is the voice in your head, right? So, for the next several weeks, as Mercury goes retrograde, it'll be a time for you to notice how the story you're telling yourself is being played out everywhere. That, you know, the interpretations you have of things and stories you tell yourself about what things mean, um, a lot of them originate from how you already look at things. You know, there's a saying that we don't see things the way they are, we see things the way we are. I think it was Aeneas Nin who said that. And, you know, it, rather than get into this sort of cheesy um, interpretation of Mercury retrograde as something that's, uh, you know, computers messing up and blaming us for, you know, miscommunications um, with technology and whatnot, those things can certainly happen. Um, it, it's more important to really look at the deeper meaning of what's going on and notice, you know, when planets are moving backwards relative to our place on Earth, it's to draw them inward and we tend to push everything outward, externalize everything, and lose our own relationship with the thing um, at the same time. So really, you know, for instance with Mercury, it's very easy to fixate on, you know, what people say to us and what we want, how we want our voice to be heard by others and you know, the outcomes we want relative to Mercury. Um, you know, how it's, you know, not not good that this thing messed up or that thing messed up. Instead of looking at why the things are messing up and how much we're honoring other people's voice, for instance, how much the misinterpretations that are coming from others are related to our failure to think clearly communicate clearly, adjust to things beyond just our own, you know, myopic view of the world. And it's important, you know, a powerful Mercury gives us the capacity, the ability to adjust to what comes our way, not just be locked into our preconceived ideas and judgments about things based on you know, all kinds of things. And again, you know, Mercury exists between Mars and Jupiter. And, you know, Mars is about our black and white assertions, a, a very argumentative quality. And Jupiter is about our judgments. And our arguments and judgments are very closely related. This is how Mercury and Jupiter are closely related. For good or bad, we're supposed to, you know, have a judgment of something after we have a lot of experience and after we gather a lot of information. That's the way it's supposed to work. Af after we gather a lot of information, Mercury, and we test it and we try it and we think intelligently about it, then we get wisdom from it, naturally, and then the wisdom leads to a sense of right and wrong, which then becomes a sort of pervasive judgment. Many times though our judgments are different. We judge things very quickly in order to avoid engagement and in order to avoid the difficulty of actually challenging our own preconceived ideas about 
you know, the things we're arguing about and those, you know, kinds of hard conclusions. This is big right now because Mercury is also going to go retrograde back over Mars. I made a video la uh, last week about the Mercury-Mars relationship and association that's going to keep playing out for months, you know, until the middle of July. So Mercury has been joined Mars. It was joined Mars in Aries. Now it's joined Mars um, in Taurus, and it's going to go retrograde back over Mars. So again, this Mercury-Mars shows this sort of cutting intellect where we have recently, it's very likely that we've, that our discrimination, which is Mercury, which is to consider other people's points of view, listen to what they say, consider that maybe our default sense of right and wrong and judgment from the past and protect, you know, all of our pr protective anger strategies from the past aren't really serving us and be more flexible and be more creative within that, be more intelligent than that. So it might be hard um, for the last several months. But again, and, and this is because Mars and Mercury have been dancing around each other. And before that, actually, Mars, I'm sorry, Mercury was debilitated and went over K2. So it's been a, a couple months of that now. So Mercury goes retrograde back over Mars again. We're going to revisit that. Then Mercury's going to go forward again. It's going to catch Mars again in Gemini. We'll be dealing with it again. So this retrograde cycle between the 18th and June 11th is a time to introspect perhaps on some of these recent miscommunications if that's been happening with you or recent things that where you've been challenged to be more flexible about your opinions. Now it's happening in the sign of Taurus which is a stable sign. It's a sign of stability. It's a sign of peace. There's also um, at least there was an exchange for a while with Venus. Uh, Venus has now joined Jupiter in Cancer. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm sorry, v yeah, Venus has now joined Jupiter in Cancer. It's a pretty wide orb of degree, but Venus is pretty, um, it's reaching its maximum elongation from the Sun. Venus is going to go retrograde in a few months in um, August, I believe, end of August, early August perhaps. When Venus gets in Leo, it's going to start to slow down and then go retrograde. So it'll be in, um, yeah, it'll be in early August, I believe. But so um, Venus, which is the ruler of Taurus, is in Cancer, which is quite emotional now, wanting to feel some kind of emotional sensitivity and peace. So we may really feel some softening around the Mars Mercury uh, lessons of the last couple months. Um, as Mercury goes retrograde, we should feel some of that around the, you know, around the end of this week into next week. Um, you know, we'll feel Mercury go back in our consciousness, go over Mars, go over the Sun. Mercury will be retrograde and combust. Now, when planets are retrograde and combust, it only happens with, Mar with uh, Mercury and Venus. Then the difficulty of the combustion is much less because the planet is closer to the Earth. And the reason combustion is tricky is because it's the planet is on the other side of the Earth. And it's, fur and it's furthest away from the um, Earth at that time. So, I mentioned this also because Mars is going to still be combust. So Mercury is going to be retrograde and also combust. And it will be joined Mars, which is also combust. So we have Mercury very close to the Earth and the Sun behind it. And we have Mars on the other side of the Sun, furthest away from the Earth. So again, there's still that flashpoint going on now with this combust Mars because Mars is still f very far away from the Earth and it will be for a while. And in fact, Mars is getting more and more combust all the time. Um, and Mercury is retrograde very close to the Earth, bringing introspection in the earthy sign of Taurus where practical growth is seen where we want to take measured actions. So 
just in a in a mundane sense, you know, Mercury hanging out in Taurus for a couple months, which is what it will wind up being, is not so bad because Taurus is a sign that really supports Mercury's um, development. Um, the thing that makes it, frankly, not so not so exciting is it's going to be join Mars again, and it'll go retrograde back over Mars again. So that makes it kind of tricky. So be careful of confusing arguments this week, confusing battles, maybe even, you know, revisiting difficult interactions. And, you know, it, it's certainly something that you could do, but be careful of it blowing up into something that's not what you thought. But it could definitely be a good time to untangle some of the recent miscommunications that you maybe had with some people. Um, there's definitely a more peaceful, peace-loving atmosphere, especially more so than the last few months when, especially back when Venus, you know, Venus and Mars went through Pisces. We had an eclipse and Venus and Mars were in Aries. Then Mercury joined and then Mercury was in Aries. Mercury, Venus, Aries. Mercury joined Mars. Mars was just dominating things for quite a while. Mars is still there. But the plan it's these planets aren't in Aries. Venus is much more peaceful. Jupiter is moving direct. It's it's less stressful. The other last thing I'll say is that Saturn is aspecting. Saturn is in Scorpio. And it's um you know, the aspect from Mars is now separating. Um but Mercury is still being influenced by the planetary aspect from Saturn, which is bringing a you know, an awareness of consequences, an awareness of needing to make a commitment to one thing or another. We're always making a commitment to something. So the need to make a commitment to something that is enduring and of long and of lasting value rather than some short term ego hit is important now. And again, this is the this has been the problem with so much Mars energy, especially with Mars being combust and all that as well, is we just Sometimes we lose our discrimination and we just want to kind of win some battle or we're fighting some battle and we lose the reason why we're even doing it. I mean, is it just to win or is it because we want to learn something, because we want to grow in intelligence? And again, this is the thing that gets sacrificed when Mars has too much power at, at given times, particularly when it's dominating Mercury and Venus, which are those planets that have to do with relationships. You know and listening to others and communicating and valuing others when those things are so dominated by Mars which is on some level just about winning and it's because we want to be victorious over our weakness on a deeper level but that comes from the inside when we perceive our weakness is coming from the outside and then we look to destroy the person who's making us weak and we get into these arguments based on these black and white hard decisions or hard opinions, and we don't we don't invite any space or interpretation of the other person's point of view, and we're just just hell bent on winning and advancing our own opinion about it or something. It's just it it really can it can really polarize situations and make things hard. So Saturn can show the consequences of those kinds of things and shows a kind of loosening and a kind of relaxing of that. And also, you know, maybe the need for some humility and some, um, you know, maybe getting down on your knees to apologize or to share your mistakes with those maybe who you haven't treated so well. You know, what's one of the biggest issues, and I say this because of Saturn, it's one of the biggest issues, one of the biggest um, things that, this is one of the reasons why Saturn exalts Mars, meaning Mars is exalted in Saturn's sign. They're still associating with each other, by the way, just because the aspect is separating, which it is. Last week it was very, it was very tight. Now it's separating, but they're still influencing each other. But the reason Mars is, is, is exalted by Saturn, meaning Mars is exalted in Capricorn, is because Mars is where we make mistakes in this way. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. There's nothing wrong with at times getting stuck in these ego battles but like Saturn is where we're aware of the mistakes and we're humbled by it and 
Mars then has the courage to like, let's say, apologize for the mistakes or have the courage and the strength and the power to own up to it and just say, you know what, sorry about that, and then just go on. Everybody can appreciate that. Everyone can appreciate that sort of thing. And Mars debilitates Saturn because Saturn winds up being very attached to, you know, the ego around that thing because Aries is very individualized. And it's like, I'm not apologizing even though I did make the mistake, no. And Aries, in the, the negative quality of Aries is the, the sort of dictator. And so, um, when Mar uh, Saturn, Mars, through aspect or, or conjunction, you'll see this kind of thing go out. And usually Saturn gets the worst of it. So it's a good opportunity, as I'm, uh, the reason I'm saying this, is for things like humility and for, you know, having the courage to be humble about what's happened recently in your life or whatever. And Saturn will also give a lot of that sort of courage, or I'm sorry, that sort of, um, you know, practical um, reckoning. He'll lend that to Mercury as well. As Mercury goes retrograde, he'll be aspected by Saturn, giving commitment to... Um, you know, silence and introspection and to clarifying that voice in your head and clarifying those values so that it's not just about your, um, so that it's not just about your opinions or even it's not just about the things that you value for yourself, but things that you want to share. Because Mercury is really a very profound energy of sharing it's, as well. It's where we want to share our ideas. We want to share what's, what's, you know, what's meaningful to us. When we, it's why we have a lot of attachment to our words. When somebody doesn't want to hear what you have to say, or they won't talk to you anymore, or whatever, it's hurtful because we express our values and we feel valued as a person based on what we say, what comes out of our mouth. And so, a lot of reflection on these things, a lot of introspection maybe about how we've made some mistakes, or we've held back, or we've criticized too much, and with that, with all the with all the Mars Mercury interaction and the Saturn aspect now is bringing some of that home into more focus and you know helping to um, you know allow us to reckon with those things as well. So this has gotten kind of long. I didn't intend it to be um, almost 18 minutes, but a lot going on. And um, so leave me some comments. I hope you have a great week.